Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Chard. I'm the dean of BU Wheelock, and it's my pleasure on behalf of Wheelock College and the Wheelock Alumni Awards Committee to welcome you to this exciting event. We apologize for the delay in getting started. We are a little nervous about the Red Sox game, heavy traffic, people trying to get here, and as you notice, several people came in later uh, just before we got started, so thank you for your patience. Um, this event each year gives us the opportunity to tell you about, gives me the opportunity to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening at our college and at BU. And I wanna use this opportunity to do that again this year. We have had an absolutely incredible year in hiring 11 new full-time faculty members joining us this fall. Some of them are here this evening. I hope you get a chance to meet them. Um, they are researchers, teacher scholars, and master practitioners from some of the strongest R1 institutions and the most uh, uh, important school districts and clinical settings in the country. Um, and as part of our strategic planning implementation, we set some aggressive goals for enrollment, particularly at the, in our undergraduate program. We've already met our enrollment, our 10-year enrollment goals in year two of that program. So we've got some adjustment of our goals to be made. And um, we've already doubled our research uh, goals, which was again, our 10-year goal in two. So we've, we're seeing some really important quantitative indicators of great work happening at BU Wheelock. Beyond those important quantitative measures, our faculty and staff are working very hard to align our programs, practices, and partnerships with our focus on syst systemic transformation and our unrelenting push for equity in education and human development. Despite all this wonderful news, I do want to temper my excitement with challenges that exist before us. And I think it's important both for our faculty, staff, and alumni communities to know these challenges. We're entering into a leadership transition at Boston University. Um, today we learned that the Boston University trustees have named the committee that will select and recommend our next president. Um, we're fortunate that Dr. Kimberly Howard, um, who is a member of our faculty and also the chair of faculty council, was asked to serve on that committee, so we have a direct representative to the presidential selection process. But anxiety around leadership transition always happens. So additionally, like colleges of education across the country, we are seeing significant uh, challenges in graduate enrollment. So I would encourage those of you who are alumni who live here in the Boston area or around the country or around the globe, we could use your help. Um, we are at a time when we, the pandemic and the media have made many parts of our uh, work in the education human development sector not a terribly desirable place to be pursuing graduate work. And so it's important that we work together to try to attract uh, strong graduate, uh, pro uh, to our strong graduate programs. Um, each year for the past four years, we've honored alumni from around the globe for their contributions to our college and to our society. Incredibly, it has never been difficult to find wonderful alums to honor, and, these, uh, and this is true this evening as well. And these honorees really help us in two ways. One, it allows us to acknowledge their great work, the work that they do every day in, in their communities, in society, it also allows us to use them as illustrations of our values as a college. And so those are the two important ways that this awards event um, help us. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Addie LaRoche who chairs the awards um, committee. And Addie, good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You.
Good evening and thank you. I am honored and humbled to accept this award and to join past recipients who I have long admired and respected. A very special thank you to Boston University Wheelock College for selecting me and consistently uplifting and amplifying my work in service of black and brown girls. And of course, thank you to my family for always supporting me. Black and brown girls constantly receive messages that they are either too much or not enough. As a black Latina, these are messages I too received from society and the media. Today, as the founder and executive director of Love Your Magic, this award is special to me because it affirms and centers our work of supporting the healthy development of black and brown girls through self-love, self-advocacy, and sisterhood. Black and brown girls deserve to be seen, known, and celebrated. So thank you so much, Boston University, for seeing me and celebrating my work. <laughs> this is working now. Um, unlike Kaylee, I didn't memorize my speech, so. <laughs> um, I first uh, met Jen as a doc student uh, at the old SED. Uh, she was always very kind to our group who would often work outside on, on the tables on the fifth floor. 
Um, however, is after I was hired as a, a social studies faculty member in the BU Elementary Education Program, uh, that she became a close friend. Um, as friends outside work, I've been lucky to see all the amazing things she does outside of like BU Wheelock, so I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about that. Um, first off, Jen is an amazing elementary teacher. Uh, she worked for many years in the Chelsea Public School, as many of you know. Uh, many of her past second um, and third graders and their parents can attest to this. Some of them are in the room today. Um, now through BU, she prepares many of the future Chelsea elementary teachers. Uh, I'm pretty sure half the educational complex uh, is, is, has somehow been involved with Jen's work uh, and probably taken CH. Uh, whenever I go to the complex, people always talk about Jen as if she's some sort of kind of educational celebrity in Chelsea. Um, Jen also has a strong commitment to supporting students and their families. She has tirelessly led Dad's Read, which has become Families Read at both the Trotter and in Chelsea. Um, there she helps students and their families connect through reading. Um, the program also helps teachers build better relationships with their students. Um, she does, she, that's not the only way she spreads the love of reading, though. Uh, during the height of the pandemic, her and her family created a, a lending library at their house. Um, realizing it'd be hard for kids to get access to the library. They'd spread out these tables in their front yard and kids could like pick up books or take books. Um, Jen's also a dedicated public service servant, as many of you know. Since 2017, she served on the Wilmington School Committee. Um, I kind of convinced her to, to run partially. <laughs> um, and she's a pas passionate advocate for equity there, sometimes when it's not popular, such as kind of supporting a resolution prohibiting the use of native mascots or, uh, you know, so it hasn't always been easy, but Jen will keep doing what's right. And finally, Jen's just like an amazing person uh, and, a, and, a, and a caring friend. Um, she cares deeply uh, about equity and social justice. She makes that um, part of her, her life's work, really. Um, and she's, she's kind, she's caring, she's thoughtful. Um, she's the type of person when you have an issue or problem, as Kayleen was saying, she'll come to you know, have a coffee with you to settle a problem or, or meet with you if you just need a little extra support. So congratulations, Jen. This is a, a well-deserved award. Everybody. Oh, that was, that was really nice. Thank you. Um, I did not memorize my speech because I get way too nervous at these things, so, but I'll try and make good eye contact. It is such a delight to receive this award from BU Wheelock, and I'm thrilled that I have been giving back to the institution and the communities that have given so much to me over the years. Actually, I should probably give BU an award for providing me with a lifetime of work that I absolutely love. I clearly love BU Wheelock, have completed three degrees here, and have been a faculty member since 2005. I love BU, but I really love teaching. When people ask me what I do, I say I'm a teacher. When I complete forms, whether it be from my children's schools or tax info, I write teacher. To me, there's no better profession, nothing I've ever been more proud of. From the first moment that I stepped into my second grade student teaching placement in Chelsea, Massachusetts, I knew that I was a teacher. I received excellent preparation here at BU to begin my work, but there are some lessons that I only learned in the classroom, and I have to thank my students for that. How lucky am I to have some of my former second and third graders here with us tonight? They don't look like that because that was 20 years ago, so <laughs> you can't find them. Um, I'm pretty confident that I wouldn't be standing here tonight if our paths hadn't crossed. They taught me many valuable lessons during our two years together. Helawani, Melissa, and Alex were my students from 2000 to 2002. We learned together, made decisions together, and took some risks. When I was asked in April of 2001 if I would loop with this group, which means I would move to third grade with the entire class, I jumped at the chance to spend more time with them. Melissa held me accountable for the community we built in our classroom. She insisted that joy be a part of every day. Helawani taught me that learning doesn't stop at the bell, but great teachers inspire their children to become learners outside of class two. And Alex, he taught me that if you believe in them, they will believe in themselves. If you challenge them, they will rise to the occasion, and the relationships you build aren't just with them, but with their family and community too. So, these lessons of community relationships and joy are the framework for my work here at BU, in Boston Public Schools, and our many partner districts. If you're a current student, you've heard me say these words many times, mixed in with choice, ownership, creating an equitable space for students. 
Thank you, BU, for allowing me to figure out who I am in this profession, for surrounding me with such brilliant colleagues, and for recognizing my work tonight. It really is an honor to be a BU alum. To my family, you are my inspiration, my strength, and the best part of every day. Thank you for cheering me on. And finally, to my students in Chelsea, especially the class of 2002. Thank you for allowing me to be your teacher and for teaching me the most important lessons of my career. I share this award with you. Can you believe we found so many good award winners this year? I can't wait for you to hear from them. Um, our next award winner is Julia Chaloner, and she is going to be introduced by our Dean, David Chard. Dean Chard worked with Julia, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I, there's more, just wait. Um, <laughs> Dean Chard worked with Julia Chaloner in her work for the historic Wheelock College Corporation, where he quickly realized the impact she has had in her work. He has continued to admire her work, particularly for its global scale. So I welcome Dean Chard to the podium to introduce our winner for the Global Impact Award this year. Thanks, Addie, and congratulations, Jim. Very well deserved. Uh, so as Addie has mentioned, Julia Chalinor was a member of uh, Historic Wheelocks Corporation, which is a large uh, group of alumni and supporters that um, frankly had to vote to close Wheelock when uh, we merged with Boston University. So she uh, loomed large in, in uh, recent decisions. Julia was a 1975 uh, a graduate of Wheelock and um, today receives our 2022 recipient, she is a recipient of our Global Impact Award. She is an RN and uh, is an international nursing consultant for pediatric oncology. Her work has been to strengthen nursing resources and opportunities in countries with limited resources. She advocates for nurses to be recognized as critical and essential members of any multidisciplinary team working to improve cancer care around the globe. For 20 years, Julia was the educational liaison, so she took her early childhood experience from Wheelock, her nursing experience, and she was the educational liaison for children with cancer and those who survived, who had survived their disease at the University of California, San Francisco, and in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area. For 12 years, she led a Tomorrow for Children Foundation and worked in partnership with pediatric oncology centers in Central America collaborating with Jude Children's Research uh, Hospital, the Pediatric Oncology Group of Ontario, Canada, and the Monza International School of Pediatric Hematology and Oncology in Italy. Since then, as you can see from the program, she's also the secretary of the, um, the, let me get this right, International Society of Pediatric Oncology, and is quite a globe trotter. In fact, I think she is in Rio this week um, at a meeting of that international society. But her work has included collaborations around the world focused on pediatric oncology in Ethiopia, India, and Southern Africa. But in all of her work, Julia strives to develop oncology nurses and extended healthcare teams to improve the care of children and adolescents with cancer while recognizing the limitations and opportunities in local contexts. So I think we have a video um, of Julia. She wanted to be here, but because of her work, she was unable to join us, except through the magic of video. Sorry to miss being at your ceremony today for the BU Wheelock Alumni Awards, but I'd like to just share with you a short message of my lifelong learning from Wheelock to global pediatric oncology nursing. When I think back from Wheelock, where I attended from 1972 to 1975, two professors really stand out. Joan Bergstrom, who many of you may know, who taught me that we need to look at children and see what they can do rather than list what they can't do, use their strengths to address areas in which they can improve. And Dr. Walter J. Burke, who was in the science department, really made a difference and got me excited about science. We didn't have the wonderful programs, STEM programs like we have now, 
but I did it myself and learned a lot from him. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Unfortunately, when I graduated, like most of my friends, uh, it was very hard to get a job because there were closing schools due to the lack of children. But it, I did do some early teaching and I went west to San Francisco State University for a new program where if you had a bachelor's in anything other than nursing, you could get a master's in nursing. It was a two and a half year accelerated program. I ended up being hired on a grant to become an educational liaison for children with cancer. And for 10 years, I drove across the northern part of California State, visiting the children's classrooms, talking to their classmates about what was happening to their friend and working with special education, IEP planning, interpreting basically what was going on with the kids, whether they were under treatment or whether they had survived their cancer and were now off treatment. I got invited to Guatemala for a pediatric oncology conference in 1995, and I met there, the lady in the center, America Galindo, a head, became our head nurse, and that unit opened in 2000. But she showed me how nurses learn in her environment, and that really served me well for the next part of my career. I also at the time started a, a foundation with friends called a Tomorrow for Children Guatemala. I moved to Amsterdam, the Netherlands in 2004, and I was recruited there to a program in Ethiopia where I stayed for seven years, uh, not living there, but visiting about four to five times a year. And I always need to travel with a clinical nurse who can explain the ABCs because I never actually worked as a clinical nurse. I started as a research nurse. But these women and men and physicians that work with them, again, taught me so much about how to give care in a setting with very limited resources and make a difference for kids and families. My last project has been, and it continues today, in India at the Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute in Delhi, working on the pediatric oncology unit with a dear friend of mine who's actually an adult oncology nurse, but a great nurse educator. In 2018, the World Health Organization started the Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer, which really put us on the map as far as the world stage of non-communicable diseases. And I saw their challenges and the priorities they had for improving care. And a lot of it included nursing because we're the single largest health workforce. And the other picture is of Mexico where the Association of Pediatric Hematology Oncology Nurses in the US has offered chemotherapy and biotherapy training in Spanish. So now we have the attention of ministries of health across the world through the World Health Organization about prioritizing childhood cancer and about 63 countries have signed on to make a difference in that area. If you look at births in 2020, you can see that low and middle income countries have the vast majority of children. And those have always been my priority since I started at Wheelock. I never regret going to Wheelock. Everything I learned at Wheelock has served me in good stead. Developing an educational liaison position for kids with cancer and survivors, listening to pediatric oncology nurses overseas who have so much to teach me, listening to parents and guardians who really are great teachers, negotiating with physicians, other healthcare workforce members and administrators, and advocating for children and adolescents with a life-threatening disease and the valiant nurses who care for them and continuing to advocate for both the children who survive their disease and become survivors because that is a long-term experience and has challenges at school as well. And also the nurses who care for them as well because they need all the support they can get. I thank you so very much for the Wheelock BU Alumni Award. I thank you for the Global Impact Award and for all that Wheelock gave me and I'm grateful to be recognized. And I wish I was there because I saw the list of other awardees and what a super group you have collected. It's an honor to be included and I thank you once again. mentioned, this year is a super group indeed. Our next winner is Tanya Lord, who is being awarded with the Trailblazer Award. Like Julia, Tanya has had an impact from Wheelock to the medical field that she broke into after an experience with her son. She is going to be introduced by Jackie Patterson, who I invite to the podium to tell you a little bit more about Tanya today.
Thank you so much. It's an, it's an honor to be able to to share these words about Tanya. She's been such a sorry, I'm also a little <laughs> vertically challenged here. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I uh, known Tanya since I first met her when we were uh, freshmen at at BU Wheelock, and that's over 32 years ago, I guess. And it really is. Let me take this off. Um, uh, such a, an honor to be able to present this award to her. She's been such a gift to me over the years, both personally as a friend, and professionally, and and otherwise. We have so many conversations about what it looks like to to transform our system so that they're more equity and justice based. We have conversations about she's she's. She's led me through navigating a health care system with my mom as she was um, in her final years of life, with my brother who, who passed away just 18 days ago. And um, yeah, um, and yeah, and Tanya helped me to uh, figure out how to navigate that system with him and, um, and just so much more. Tanya's just been a gift to me. But when they, um, when they said I had to somehow present this award in um, two, two minutes, under two minutes, I thought, how can I really properly encapsulate all that Tanya has been to me and to the, to the world? And I thought I would get a little bit creative with it. So I'm treating you all to my second ever publicly performed poem. <laughs> so uh, without further ado. So as you laid your dear son Noah to rest, how to forge onward was the ultimate test. With inspired determination, you gave deep honor to Noah's legacy of light by illuminating a road to ensure other families won't face a similar plight. Following the path that BU Wheelock Studies helped lay, you share Noah's story to educate health care providers on a better way. Knowing how terribly common medical errors and other challenges are, you blazed a trail to equitable, just, and quality patient care So hospital systems, as hospital systems North Star. Between tears and training and transformative tactics, when you leave the room, agreement on what's needed is clear and tacit. As I wrap with homage to your heart, love, and brilliance so sharp, if this poem was any better, someone would start strumming a harp. <laughs> I'll end with extolling my deepest respect for you. It is my greatest pr privilege to present this Trailblazer Award with no further ado. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was not unexpected. Um, thank you, um, Jackie and BU. Um, <clears throat> I pretty much grew up on this campus. My mom was head of the African Studies Library for three plus decades. I had my first job here when I was 11. This summer I was 11. My mom had me come with her to work every day and punch holes in card catalogs. And I'm looking, you know, for the cards, for the card catalog, I'm looking <laughs> to see what gray hairs, no offense, um, remember <laughs> those, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I, she paid me a great 50 cents an hour. Um, I did not understand child labor laws at that time, and <laughs> apparently neither did she. <clears throat> um, she loved to tell the story of how I would come to her at the end of every hour and say, can I have my 50 cents? <laughs> and she's like, that's not really how it works. Um, but she, so she's, she was my first boss and I would take my earnings when she would give them to me down to the student union. And as I wandered about amongst um, the students and faculty and staff there, I thought, I, in my head, I believed that they were like, look at her, she's a totally cool college student. <laughs> and uh, that summer definitely kept me in, in uh, colored pens and notebooks and all the stuff that was available at the student union um, at the time. At 18, as an actual college student, I continued to hang out at the library and the student union. I also had a job, it paid a little bit better than my mom did. And being a college student here was every bit as cool 
as that 11 year old self, my 11 year old self imagined. I learned to not only teach students with special needs, Clyde, <laughs> my husband's tearing up, he can't do that to me. Um, I not only t learned to teach students with special needs, but I also learned here to suspend judgment and assumptions about somebody's ability to be successful. It was here that I learned that creativity and a willingness to try something new could create innovative solutions to a multitude of problems. I met my best friend here, you've also met her. I fell in love for the first time here, it wasn't to this guy. Um, <laughs> had my first heartbreak here, also not this guy. And I met my husband here, who is this guy. <laughs> After graduating and teaching for a while, <clears throat> I was blessed to give birth to my first son, Noah. I stopped working to be his mom, stay-at-home mom, and together we would visit the campus, him in a carrier, and I would walk around and I imagine, look at, they think I'm a college student with a kid. They, they think I'm super cool and dedicated to my education. Sadly, <clears throat> in 1999, my life changed when my son at four and a half years old died from a series of medical errors following a tonsillectomy. I was devastated and in, in deep need of understanding of what had happened to him. I lived in New Jersey at the time um, and I couldn't come to the BU campus. So my mom brought BU to me in the form of articles um, Xerox copies of textbooks, everything that she could find, everything that was related to tonsillectomy, post-tonsillectomy deaths, and tonsillectomy um, uh, methods. <clears throat> this really, as I read through these articles, some I understood, some I couldn't understand, I felt compelled to change what I was doing and I really felt the need that to look at, at healthcare, um, to work in healthcare to improve and to um, study and, rec and sorry, to study the, the causes behind medical errors. I ended up going for a master's in public health and then a doctorate focused on patient safety research. Um, Whoops, sorry. Um, on, I, so I focus on patient safety research and I really did see myself as, a, as an academic. Um, but I changed and shifted a little bit as I realized one of the ways to transform healthcare was to bring in to healthcare the lived experience and the voice and perspectives of patients and families. So that's what I do in New Hampshire with our hospital association and then across the country. Um, to, sorry. So understanding that, um, so I do a lot of, you heard in Jackie's great poem, which still is resonating in my head. Um, you know, so I do a lot of teaching of healthcare workers to make healthcare more patient-centered and more focused on patients' needs, et cetera. I'm not sure, as I stand here and think about it, I'm not sure which is more difficult, teaching healthcare providers or teaching kids to read. I'm, I'm thinking that I, the kids were a little bit easier for me. <laughs> Before today, the last time I walked was on campus here was when my mother, I had my mother's memorial service at Marsh Chapel. Um, as I stroll the count, as I stroll the campus for the, before and after her, the service, I no longer thought that I was mistaken for a college student. I thought maybe, maybe they're thinking I'm a professor, hopefully a wiser, professor than I was when I was 11, and, but definitely a bit sadder. Today, as I came on campus after a few years of not being here, many years, I reflected 
mostly on the lessons that I've learned here. I, instead of worrying about what people imagine, people, instead of imagining what people were mistaking me for. Um, so from card, card, catalog card punching to acceptance and love, I'm grateful for the lessons I've learned on this campus and at this, what I knew as the School of Education. And um, so thank you to BU and can't, sorry, thank you to BU and all those who have helped me grow from my first job to my first career as a teacher to my second career as still a teacher, just different population, and all of those lessons that have really sustained me in my brightest moments and in my darkest. Thank you again for this award. Thank you so much, Tanya, for sharing your story with us. I don't think there's too many dry eyes in here anymore. Our final award is being presented to Leah Hollis. Reggie Jean, who won the Lucy Wheelock Award last year, is going to present our next award. Reggie and Leah had the chance to connect in anticipation for this event and have shared work and shared dedication to their work in equity, diversity, and inclusion. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Reggie Jean to announce our next winner. Thanks, Addie. Um, and congrats to all the award recipients. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, among you. Um, and uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Reggie Jean. I'm the director for Upper Bound and Upper Bound Math Science here at uh, Boston University uh, that's held at, at BU Wheelock. Um, I have the immense pleasure of introducing the recipient of the Lucy Wheelock Award, uh, which recognizes an alumnus for exemplary service and leadership to their profession or their community, including advocating for social justice. Uh, Lucy Wheelock is credited for saying, the one thing that makes life worth living is to serve a cause. For Wheelock, that cause was a childhood education. For Dr. Leah P. Hollis, it is advocating for a healthy and equitable workplace for all. Uh, Leah P. Hollis is the founder of the Patricia Berkeley LLC in Philadelphia, a healthy workplace advocate. And all of you have her um, biography in your uh, pamphlet, so I'm not going to um, read it verbatim. Uh, but I do want to mention that her work includes trainings, webinars on discrimination and work workplace hostility. Uh, she has written multiple books uh, and uh, presented several times uh, on the uh, examining the structural problems that enable workplace bullying. Uh, Dr. Hollis is currently an associate professor at Morgan State University and received an EDD in administration training and policy studies from Boston University as the Martin Luther King Jr. Fellow. Uh, she has also been an expert witness in trials related to workplace environment. The work that Dr. Hollis is engaged in may be part of her DNA. Uh, in 2020, in a 2020 training with Question Lane that was entitled Workplace Bullying and Colorism, Dr. Hollis shared that her dad was a superintendent in Pennsylvania and was recruited to help uh, des des desegregate the schools. Her mom worked at the University of Pittsburgh as the affirmative action officer, and both her parents were advisors on the State Human Rights Commission. Our colleague, Dr. Hardin Coleman, describes her as a justice warrior. When questioned about why she is motivated to serve this cause, she replied, everyone should work in a healthy work environment. Sounds simple. Many of us know about the recent bomb scares at Boston University and Northeastern University. I assume you did. Did anybody hear about the bomb scares? At, okay, all right. Uh, when there's a physical bomb um, threat at a college, there's often an evacuation, emergency response teams are called in, canine units do a sweep of the building, streets may be sealed off like Silver Way was on Monday, until all is clear and it, everybody can return to work. And then we get the 
alerts on our phones, we get the alerts on our email and our text. Um, it usually makes news as well. So when it happened at Northeastern earlier uh, last week, um, the news broke um, about a bomb scare at a university in Boston. My mom, who lives in Georgia, called me to see if I was okay. I had to explain to her that I'm fine. Northeastern's a different university. I'm at Boston University, so I'm good. Everybody's good. My daughters are good. My wife's good. Um, but then the scare happened at BU, um, across the street from our building. And I didn't hear from my mom. <laughs> I'm like, go figure. Uh, when there's a bully in academia exhibiting continual rage at a colleague, or what the Huffington Post called anger bombs in a 2016 article, uh, Dr. Hollis's work informs us that it can at best derail pr productivity and at worst causes mental health issues, physical ailments, and resignations. However, because there is often no legal remedy or institutional policy against workplace bullying, there are often few actions taken and it is rarely talked about. Dr. Hollis's goal is to change that. Uh, Dr. Leah P. Hollis, for your exemplary service and leadership to an important cause, being one of the few that is highlighting and advocating for this social justice issue, and for your dedicated service, um, uh, your de de dedication to serve on the Anger Bomb Squad for so many institutions, I am honored to present you as the 2022 Lucy Wheelock Award recipient. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. I'm really humbled and honored. It's always a surprise when these kinds of things happen. Um, I'm going to use the tech notes, so please forgive me. I'm not texting. So, yes, I'm Leah P. Hollis, originally from Warren, Ohio, raised in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, by Levi and Clea Hollis, who spent their lives not just supporting my brother and I, but by forging a pathway for civil rights, whether it was in Ohio, whether it was in Greater Johnstown, and even since my father's passing, my mother has done so much work, and I pretty much follow in her footsteps as well. As stated earlier, I do study workplace bullying, and what's interesting is we often think about bullying as two kids on a playground pushing each other off a of swing sets. No, I see the heads going, yes, you're correct. It affects adults, and because of the power differential, women and those of color tend to be more likely to face bullying because they're in the positions that have the least amount of power. I recognize full well, I was an MLK fellow when I attended here, 95 to 98, so I should wax lyrical about MLK and civil rights, and I'm going to run down the list, right, of civil rights uh, activists. But please know, I was so honored then. I remember getting that call. I can remember the day when I got the call saying, hey, you're going to be a, a fellow here. That was so wonderful. But let me say this about BU. So first, it prepared me to be an administrator. So when I graduated in 98, I went on to Rutgers University as an administrator and have served at a community college. I've served in for-profit education. I've also decided, hey, I really dig this teaching thing. And I had been teaching all along, and therefore I switched careers from an administrator to turn around and become a tenure-track professor at Morgan State University and earn tenure a couple of years ago. I'm very honored. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. But I have to say, I know I stand on the shoulders of so many. I could talk about Sojourner Truth, who's one of the first to talk about intersectionality. We have Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Fannie Lou Hamer, Ida Wells, Ella Baker, and other activists that we know today, such as Michelle Obama, the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and our current Vice President, Kamala Harris. I have to say that the successes that I have, I want to thank personally Dr. Hardin Coleman. It was several years ago, I called him up out of the blue almost, hey, can I get some mentorship? It was really that simple, and he says yes. 
and we have been working together ever since, and his support has really advanced my career as an educational researcher. Thank you so much. But I have to say, instead of going on and on and on about civil rights, I want to dedicate this award to my mother. My mother is Clea Patrick Hollis. She came up here with me from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. She chases her kids all over the place. I just happened to catch her this time coming to Boston. Soon she'll be going to Texas uh, to visit with my brother and my niece is just burning up the track. We're so proud of her. So as I thank Boston University for honoring my work and my research and my commitment, and I stand on the shoulders of so many people, the shoulders I stand on the most are my parents and I want to dedicate this award to you, Mom. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of our award recipients this year. I would like to take a moment to just give them all another very well-deserved round of applause. Before I forget, I am going to ask the award recipients and their nominators to just stay up here so we can have a few photo opportunities before we all dismiss for the day. But as you can all see, this year's pool of awardees was incredibly strong. And it wasn't too difficult to choose all that we did. We had a wonderful time talking about your candidacy, getting to know your work, talking with your nominators, and getting to know more about you. And we're especially delighted to have you here on campus today. We couldn't do this without a few key players. First of all, Mary Ellen, who's trying to exit the stage. So if we could give her a round of applause. Yeah, so gotta make sure the bar is open. Very important work. Um, so Mary Ellen kind of directs this event. We really appreciate her being here. Along with all of the alumni awards committee that I have up, if everyone on the committee could stand so everyone can see you. I see you all. <laughs> We have a wonderful time working together. We meet about once a month in the season for the award recipients and everyone puts in a lot of work to make it to meetings, to review nominations, to recruit nominations. So we really appreciate you all being here and your thanks for them. This is my shameless plug to ask any alumni in the room to please join our committee next year. It's not too big of a commitment. We have a wonderful time. And most importantly, we get to share in each other's work and in the incredible work of our alumni. So if you are interested in joining the committee, please, please, please flag me down or Mary Ellen down so we can add you to the email list and get you up here with us next year. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope that you all join us for our reception out in the lobby. Thank you again. <laughs> <laughs>